Hey folks, it's E-Chip and Robber, uh, not in the shop or at location too, but uh, in fact in a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> we have technical difficulties again. So, we had a really interesting experience today. We went to a prepper expo. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost at a loss for words, but not because <laughs> you, know, you want to be careful with your words. I do. You? One of the speakers was quite a character <clears throat> and we're not going to name the speaker. We don't want a lawsuit or anything no, like that. No, <laughs> but some of the things that uh, he stated were shocking. We went to this Prepper Expo because well, we'd never been to one. And of course, you know, uh, taking on this new lifestyle and moving toward becoming more self-sufficient, living off grid, those kinds of things, it can't hurt to know as much as possible. For us, it's about learning. I do consider myself a prepper to an extent. And that comes from his line of work that he was mm -hmm. in and he has experienced a lot of situations where people were at losses and didn't have the resources right. and the requirements or yes. whatever they needed to get past uh, an, an electrical outage or a food shortage or something. I've had a front seat to some of the most remarkable disasters uh, in America over the past say 20 years. Uh, you know those experiences it had a lot to do with forming my uh, uh, my Prep preparations in, in later life uh, for a transition to off-grid living. During a natural disaster or any major disaster, the last place you want to be is in a major city. And, you know, where we live, the, anytime there's, oh goodness, a snowstorm, there's always the rush on the, the supermarkets and people go and they freak out. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And um, for me personally, with the pantry, our pantry's not huge, but with the amount of things we have, we could certainly last, I don't know, a pretty good- Several bit. months. Yeah, and, and so I like that, the notion of having that sort of safety net. We could help out our, our families and things mm -hmm. like that too. Um, and I love not having to just freak out and go, oh no, there's a possibility of being without electricity for a week. But more than that, I mean, growing our own food mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, learning to do more things for ourselves rather than buy them, learning to make things, learning to produce uh, some of the uh, things that we need, like soap, you know, that we'll use. Uh, just simple things like that it sort of gives you an idea for our background in prepping practical uh, yet prepared for something that could happen uh, that's worse um, in case you know the zombie apocalypse occurs or, or whatever so this is why we went to this prepper expo not because we want to learn how to you know best take care of our AR-15 or or you know, learn how to make homemade grenades, or you know, just any of those things that that you that might be ordinarily associated with prepping. The, yeah, the stereo, yeah. the classic stereotypes right. and things. Although, I think those things are important and they definitely have a place, um, but it's just not our cause. So. With that said, I'm. Go right ahead. Okay, so. <laughs> One of the speakers, like I said, was very interesting, introduces himself, tells all of his, um, what do you call it? Curriculum vitae. Yes, yeah. and that he did call it that too, by the way, his CV. And so I'm like, okay. From the very beginning, I was expecting something. Great things. Yes, interesting. So I, uh, each hip. Each hip really presents it in a much better way than I can. And I'll let him tell you the let, let me just Let me just put it this way. There are 
presenters who present information out of a genuine care, concern, and humility, uh, and uh, you know, a genuine desire to get information across for the benefit of the listener, with the purpose of helping. And I would not say that this particular presenter was not interested in helping, because I believe he was. I, I believe his motives are sincere. But to be honest, boy, I'll tell you, there are a few people in life I've heard who've been so absolutely full on themselves uh, as this presenter. Um, okay, um, this, to me, this is classic God complex. And I really don't know that I've ever met, well, I'm, or spoken or heard anyone with the level of God complex this man had. <laughs> Um, bragged about his stockpiles and how he would welcome people and he would never turn anyone away. So this is where it gets to be, as I put, a car wreck I cannot stop looking at. <laughs> he. What do you mean a car wreck you stop, can't stop looking at? Or a burning building, as you put you it. You mean like when you drive by and and you, and just, you just can't take your eyes off that carnage? The rubbernecking, well, yeah, pretty much. And Egypt looks at me and says, hey, are you, do you want to go? And I'm like, no, I can't get enough of this. I, wanna, I can't wait to hear what he's going to say. And I thought, say. yes. <laughs> so he has this vision of what life for him will look like in a post-apocalyptic world. This guy has an idea that someday people are going to erect statues to him. They're going to name buildings after him and towns after him. Schools. Schools. Uh, because he is basically basically going to rescue so many people, uh, you know, through his prepping efforts that he's going to become some sort of founder or patriarch uh, or, or father of some new society wherein, uh, you know, if, if you're a man who has a skill that's marketable to, to the community, why then he will choose and welcome you. Uh, and, and he will, he will feed you and your wife and children, uh, you know, so long as you do what he says. And he mm -hmm. will have people under him with titles such as ministers of education, of health, and some other things I can't remember the specifics, yeah. but those two I do remember. Yeah, but but he 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 waxed very um, wistfully, you know, about about what the future will be like as he sits on his porch, and his grandchildren sit at his feet in a circle around him, and he tells them stories about what life was like before SHTF, you know, and things like this, as if he is you know, some sort of adorable figure that people are going to look up to. And when he began to talk like that, it made just about all of the credible information that he might have had to give um, unpalatable. You know, I just couldn't, you know, we really just couldn't listen to him. Uh, but yet I could not turn away because oh, right. I could not wait to hear... If it could get any more preposterous, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, I mean, without a doubt, he's a character. And, uh, you know, definitely loves the attention of people. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, press that notification button, and just come hang out with us all the time. Please. <laughs> oh, and another thing he said, too, which I thought was interesting, is back to the woman, the, this thing. So he was talking about... The per you know, how long a person will live in this kind of a situation. Well, you know, hey, I've kind of always joked, I'll be the one of the first ones to go, but oh well, whatever. But he did mention that a woman, and he did say this, ought to put a bullet in her brain and let the man take care of the kids because the man has a better chance of keeping the kids alive than she does. And he did say he, she should... Well, he, he did say that. He didn't say eat a bullet, but he did. I don't know. He said something like he that. He suggested that if things got desperate, that would be the way. It should be yes, the way to go. That the woman yeah. should take her own life to make sure her children had a what, like a two percent better chance of living or I, something. I, I don't mean, remember him using numbers. No, but. I don't know. But he did use a little. He did use some percentages. He he did make himself out to be very magnanimous. <clears throat> he was you know throwing out bags of rations and free things to people. Mm -hmm. You know just just to be kind, 
Um, of course, that's a nice marketing tool too. But, you know, he handed somebody in the audience a $20 bill, told me to keep it, you know, this kind of stuff. It just, I don't know. Um, would I say that the man is not sincere? I don't think so. But I would, I, I mean, you know, his idea of what the future is like, um, you know, for himself, I don't think he's somebody that I would run to. You know, as someone who has resources, if I were out of resources, uh, just because of the things he said. The control know. factor. Yeah. And so. the being beholden to him and being, yeah. oh, thank you so much. Yeah, the adoration oh, he'll seek. And, you've, uh, you've saved my family. Right. And all willingly because you've saved my family. Because he played on every yeah, sympathy he you could play on yeah. to a male, in my opinion. And I mm -hmm. even said that. He played on them big time. And, of course, it was to motivate the, there's mostly men there, so it's to motivate them to get involved in prepping and, buys products and I, I get and, that you know when so. he asked well, what do you think of him as a woman and I'm just like <laughs> I can't I don't even what I don't even know what to think because wouldn't you oh well, come on what, I, he used an example of a pack of <laughs> thugs young thugs raping sorry that's maybe raping a 90 year old woman or something like that and I said I think I would beg the young thugs to take me with them <laughs> than to have to endure and be a shrine giver to the man or whatever. Not shrine giver, but that's, I mean, really, that's what I Be a I worshiper. Would, I would rather eat, this is my classic line, arsenic laced shards of glass than to stay with this man. He made it clear during his talk that there was going to be a major uh, chaotic uh, an uh, event that is going to, you know, change life as we know it in the world uh, by mid 2020. You know, almost sounded like a prophecy. Almost seems like like this guy watched every post apocalyptic movie. You know, from Mad Max to Handmaid's Tale to you know <laughs> whatever, whatever. Um, you know, and formulated this new uh, order uh, of things that's going to happen. I just. So the long and the short of it is that there are people out there who give prepping a bad name. <laughs> and those of us who prep, you know, for real, real events, you know, for, for, you know, the short term thing or even for the long term thing, but more practically, um, are the ones who get the ugly name because of it. Uh, so I don't know. We just wanted to share with you our experience, uh, that we had today and, I found it, I found it comical, but then also a little sad, uh, because you know there are people there who generally, who genuinely, I think, wanted to know uh, what to do, and if the answer is go find somebody with all the resources and worship him, uh, then no, that that's I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's something I want to do. My family, people I know, you know, they look at me and say, "You're a prepper." It's like, yeah, of sorts. Uh, but it, it almost, you know, but but you almost feel guilty or embarrassed or something for being prepared for things like this, uh, when when of course those are your examples, you know, people who say, in a way, in a roundabout way, or or maybe suggest in a roundabout way, listen, if you don't have the skills we need, we're gonna put a bullet in your head. I'm gonna keep your wife in jail. Well, but he didn't say that, but I mean, it was like, that was oh the, my gosh. That straight up to me was his implication. He despises fear mongering, mm -hmm. yet he's he doing spent it an hour doing on it. the uh, top of the scale. Anyway, thanks for checking us out, folks. Have a good night.